Arigato no gozaimasu. The All Blacks give the Brave Blossoms the old Jake the Mus. But now the All Blacks turn their attention to the English. Can the Poms get revenge on home soil? Or will the All Blacks complete the Royal Flush? But before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you know when we upload. Hey guys, welcome to Rugby Heads, powered by the Big Athlete Club. My name is Sione, and joining me are our regular Rugby Heads, Alex Einside and Nemani Nandolo. Welcome boys, welcome, welcome. How are we? Now, uh, before we get into uh, the kickoff of the ordination series, a uh, bit little rundown of today's show. We start off with our top performers of the week, our opportunity to give flowers to the players that stood out for us over the weekends. Then we go around the grounds and we dive deep the uh, All Blacks versus Japan debrief, and then the Autumn Nation series preview with the two games coming up this weekend: All Blacks versus England. Scotland versus Fiji, and then a bit of news out of Australia with a potential third tier competition set to start next year. And then we uh, once again update uh, URC, English Prem, Top 14, and the MPC final over the weekend. Now, Nems, you want to kick us off with your top performer of the week? Um, yeah, my top performer was, um, I thought, your cousin. Big uh, Opeti Latu. Yeah. Is it Opeti Latu? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hello, sorry, hello. So, Opeti Latu. Hello. I actually um, congratulated him on his debut. He, uh, I thought, like, you know, it's it's a shame to see yeah. a front rower, particularly when Australia probably needs them with, you know, with the ageing ones we've got now. Just to see him on the field and play for Japan. And uh, I think just to see him on there um, for me was, uh, yeah, your cousin. Yeah, he did well. Scored a try. Um, nice little in and out step, uh, just like myself, but he actually made it work. Um, so, yeah, good to see him uh, debut and did well in the scrums as well. But, uh, Alex, who stood out for you over the weekend? I think uh, it's good to see old blokes whining about the clock. We always talk about young guys having a go. So, uh, Julian Savia in yeah. the uh, NPC final. Um, that first try where he just steamrolls that bloke is uh, whining about the clock. But, yeah. Um, like, I just thought he, he kind of started a bit slow and he thought maybe he wasn't going to have a good game. Like, what boy, was I wrong? Uh, killed it. Two tries. I think he's a big reason why they won. A wet, windy old Wellington, which is pretty standard for there. But, um, yeah, he killed it. Big, big Julian Savia. Yeah, big, big, the big bus. Good to see him uh, still rolling strong. Uh, my one was uh, from the All Blacks, uh, Wallace Satutu. Um, Satutu? From the All Blacks, Wallace Satiti. Uh, I was getting mixed up. But, uh, mate, he's the runs. He, You're jet lag. Yeah. <laughs> the runs, the, the lines that he runs, um, especially that one in the first half when he made that first line break of his off the line out, Sam came, came around, and he just run that short line through. And um, unlike most forwards, he doesn't panic when he uh, when he's in broken field as well. So uh, he didn't throw any stupid uh, Uso passes, uh, just took the contact, and then off the next play, the, um, the in the scoring play. So Wallace Satiti is, uh, mate, once again, one of my favourites and uh, stood out over the weekend. But then uh, we might as well go into around the grounds. All Blacks get an early scare from the Japanese, eventually running away with a big 64-19 win. Nems, thoughts on the game and who stood out for you from both? Sides. Yeah, I, I, look, it was expected um, New Zealand were going to come out firing and, and probably put a score like that. I think we we're all expecting that. Um, good to see a glimpse of, you know, Japanese rugby of old, yeah. you know, winding back to 2019. It came out firing and, you know, it, it was good to see, to see it. But I, 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 again, for me, you, you've um, pointed him out, uh, Satiti, just phenomenal around the park, you know, when he doesn't have the ball, he's just, his work rate, Yeah. Um, you know, he's starting to nail, you know, his spot in the starting 15. And, um, you know, back line was just, you know, I was really impressed with um, Talia and uh, Sebu didn't get too much opportunities, but um, yeah, it was uh, definitely a good hit out before they head over to, um, sorry, to England, yeah. they play the UK. So... Yeah, look, it was an expected game. But to be fair, there wasn't much in it. We all knew what was going to happen, but it was good to see some, um, you know, a bit of 10 minutes of uh, fireworks at the start there. Yeah. And uh, Lex, who stood out for you? And did anyone, in your eyes, push for a, a starting spot in that 23 for this uh, weekend against England? I think it just the start of that game was just pretty obvious that... Um, they haven't played in a while, yeah. the All Blacks, which is not that long, but that's all I kind of noticed from the start. 
Um, Japan's probably had a bit more test rugby more recently, I guess. Um, I don't think I don't. It's hard to change that side, the All Black side. I think they probably in that rugby championship were a bit unlucky at times, but. Um, I mean, yeah, you can't go past Wallace. He's got to be one of my, we're all talking about him. He's got to be one of my most, fa- like, favourite All Blacks. I just, he's had a good super rugby season, but it's, he's just gone another step, yeah, um, which you probably do for an All Blacks jersey. But um, I just thought Japan um, just couldn't tackle. I know it sounds like a really basic yeah. kind of thing of the game, and they obviously got 60 points on, it's pretty obvious, but they were just falling off some pretty basic um, tackles. So, yeah. Um, yeah, look, I think Eddie Jones has a lot to answer for, but um, I mean they can keep him as long as he wants. But <laughs> I would like to see, I'd like to see Japan be a bit stronger than that. Um, I think it's better for our rugby. Yeah, um, they're they're obviously in the northern hemisphere, but they're a southern hemisphere uh, union team in a way. So um, yeah, pretty disappointing for Japan. But I mean the All Blacks, I think that's a good blowout game, and I think that uh, we'll get into it. But I think England should be pretty wary of them um, yeah. after that. Yeah, I thought um, the skipper, Paddy Tupolotu, he had a massive game, uh, big runs, um, and also led uh, around the park. But um, like Nems brought it up, there was little glimpses of Japan from 2019, but there's still a, f- a fair bit uh, from like, um, like a lot of the tackling. Like the, back in the days, they had uh, Peter Laviscadne, uh, Michael Leach, they had big double efforts, the six and seven there, and they're, they're kind of missing that. They got the big ball runners at the moment in the in the forward pack because Will Derns, I think he was one of the best for Japan and uh, the Fijian, the other Fijian lock, uh, Waka. I think they had a good combination, but I think they were still missing that little, that open side sort of flanker, um, which I don't think he meant always the open side flanker. I think he's more of an eight. Um, but I think Dil- Dylan Riley is still that punch that they needed. But like uh, back in the days, they had uh, Tim Lafaele and Ryoto Nakamura. I think they were massive back in the days in the end 2019, which I think they're missing. Dylan Riley is getting that punch, but I think they're still think- missing another bit of punch. And like B- Alex said, uh, he, Eddie is doing what he did with the Wallabies here where he's gotten rid of a lot of the old heads and some of the young guys have barely even played in the uh, top uh, league in, in Japan. They're straight out of university, which I think we saw with that number 15. He hadn't played any top uh, leagues straight from uni and uh, there was a massive difference in that play. But um, Nems, do you think, what do you think Eddie and, and the Japanese boys have to do to be competitive again once in, in the world stage? <laughs> Well, obviously, when they were the, the time that they were competitive, they were, they were in the uh, Super Rugby Comp, remember the Sun Wolves. Yeah, and, that's right. I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, who was it? Was it Jamie Joseph, the yeah. old? So Jamie Joseph, he yeah. he picked his, his Japanese squad went on an A's tour. I don't yeah. know if he's remembered. I remember that. And story, they were tearing yeah. everyone up. So their B team was in the in the Super. Yeah. And were getting towered up. So. Uh, but anyway, I think the biggest thing there is not playing in a competitive competition, um, Super Rugby. But but I just think, like you, you said, they're just missing those those big old heads. You know, your yeah. leeches who who you can depend upon. He's been there for for yonks, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, look for me. I just think they've got to weather the storm. I think maybe J- Japanese rugby might be a bit n- more patient with Eddie as opposed to the Australian rugby. Yeah. Um, so. If he can have his way, find like actually have his way and stick with his squad, like you know they're going to get bashed. Like you said, it, their fullback came out of university. Yeah, I mean it's not good now, but you know maybe three, four years. I'm assuming now they're all waiting. They're all Eddie's World Cup, right? So he's his eyes on the World Cup. So if you stick with his squad now, get some beatings, cop some uh, hidings along the way. I reckon. You know, it's an over, it's not an overnight success for these guys. I think give them three years, though, they should be all right. But again, they're just they're not big enough. They, we saw that against Fiji when they played in the PNCs. Yeah, you know what I mean. They they were just, they just got beaten around, and we saw that again against the All Blacks. Yeah, that's a good, uh, wise response. I could tell Alex is uh, waiting to say, yeah, that, let's see if all the Japanese guys go to NRL next year like the Aussies did this year. But um, <laughs> uh, I just think, like, I think it's, um, I think so much you want to play young guys and it's all about young guys, but it's not always good for young guys to play that early with, you know, exposure is great, but, you know, exposure to a pretty 
decent All Black side, probably not a great All Black side, but a decent All Black side for some young guys out of uni. Yeah, it might be good for them, but it could also break them. I don't think it's always, um, I don't think it's always straight down the middle that you you got to do that. And I mean, there's a World Cup in four years. I don't know how that's why you need to start doing that now. Um, I think slowly integrate it. But, yeah, I was having a look at the team list from Japan. I kind of looked at the team list from um, the World Cup and it was very different. And guys retire and move on. But there's a lot of guys I did, you know, did the old Google search, might not know them too well, but still pretty young. So, yeah, right, Eddie's kind of done what he's done here and um, it didn't work here. But I don't know. Hopefully it works out. I, I got you, – you kind of want these nations to be strong because it, it helps mm-hmm. us. And yeah. – um, I think they need to be back in the Super Rugby comp. Um, yeah, like Nem said, it'd be awesome to have them in the Super Rugby comp. Work out how they can – all their top league players from their comp can actually play in the Super Rugby so it's not crossing over because I know that did happen at times um, so that you wouldn't get the, the best of the best. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, so, um, in other words, Eddie, uh, we're, uh, we're back in you once again. Uh, hopefully you do some good things down there in Japan. Uh, but over in the Autumn Nation Series, all the teams have pretty much picked their squads. Um, Nems, which players are you looking forward to seeing in action? Oh, look, the squads, have, most of them come out. I'm, I was uh, surprised some of Krevi got, got, um, got the nod. I thought, by like, great addition, I think yeah, it's yeah. awesome that some has um, been called in. I think... Um, you know, his size and experience is going to go a long way. Yeah. Um, now, again, Japanese rugby is different to to playing super, I guess. Well, it's, yeah. But in saying that, I think he'll adapt really well. I saw a photo of him and Joseph Swaili, um, yeah. just the two of them. Wow, that would be a great center. You know, that that in itself sells put bombs on seats. But yeah. um, I'm happy to see someone there. I'm glad that he's there just, just to have sort of his – Technically, he's kind of an old head, really yeah. now, isn't he? He's coming into his thirties. I think he's thirty. So, um, but um, I'm really excited to see um, my old teammate Mosesi Tupolotu, or Sess, they call him from yeah. Eastern Suburbs. Well, he's from Melbourne, but um, he um, he's been announced in the Scotland team. Yeah. Um, whether they play him or not, I've got a feeling they might play him against Fiji. Yeah. Um, so how good would that be? That be to see you know the brothers because um, uh, his brother's a captain, right? Yeah, just got named yeah. captain of uh, Scotland. Yeah. yeah, so it'd be good to see those two play. I'll, I'll be excited to see those two play, uh, and I'm sure I've got a feeling that they're going to play him. Uh, he'll play, but I reckon yeah. might get his crack against Fiji, which was um, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, that's a good uh, shout. Uh, I was surprised with uh, someone. Not that uh, he's, he's not good enough. He's definitely good enough. It was more that uh, the Israel Falau podcast came out and uh, they were uh, letting out all the all the back end stories from back in the days. And when they picked him, I'm like, oh, Australian rugby must be forgiving now. They're just uh, playing on. So, and uh, someone actually looked fitter than he was in World Cup year because he did just yeah. come back from a knee injury last year at the, at the World Cup, and he's looking a lot fitter now. Um, so, um, yeah, it's good to see him there. And Sess, um, I know uh, a lot of the Scottish fans are complaining, just like they did complain when uh, Sione got picked as captain, uh, just because they don't feel that he's uh, full uh, Scottish, just because they're grand, they're grand Scottish. But I, th- I think he's good enough, too. He was just at the Waratahs. He was behind some decent players like Forketti yeah. um, and all those other boys, mate. Um, it's good to see him finally get his chance. And I think he will, um, him and his brother will be a mass, a decent combination if they do get to play together uh, but uh, Alex uh, who were you looking forward to seeing um, I mean he's been my probably my man crush over the NPC but big Tane Edmund um, yeah. mate, he I'm so glad he's got to go I, I'd I'd almost say that no one's kind of cemented their spot at 10 um, since the uh, the new era but I mean I'd just give him a, I'd start him I think um, he's been playing the most footy he looks more confident and I think it, he's got probably Probably a pretty strong forward pack that we've had in recent times in front of him, which I think could could help him. Um, obviously, Nems' uh, best mate, Harry Potter. Um, yeah. Good to see him in. Nems caught it early. Um, Joseph Sawali, awesome. Like, I think reading so many different articles where they're going to play him, I think I think you got to at least give him a crack. I think that's the 
<laughs> we're talk, I just I know I just said you know give young blokes a crack and all the time, but I think he's proved, you know yeah. he's come from he's come from a twenty six game NRL season. He's fit and um, he looks good in that that gold jersey. So him and uh, obviously it's good to see, and I think it's important that this mix it's fine in the mix of young and old, but having Skelson um, in the squad, yeah. I think's huge. Um, he's obviously in the middle of a season. He'd be pretty good, pretty match fit, but um, a guy that. I'd like to see them utilise a bit more. And I think the Waratahs didn't utilise him enough and he didn't really get to play as Lange Gleeson. I think he's still yeah. a pretty world-class back rower. And I'd like, I think in the, the Northern Hemisphere, he's got a real opportunity to, you know, break the line. Um, he's a big body. I don't think they have so many guys they play against like him over there. Um, so, yeah, look, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I think it's going to go um, a lot better than we think. Yeah, well, um, I was expecting uh, whitewash. So, um, yeah, no, um, but uh, yeah, All Blacks kick off for versus England. Um, Nems, All Blacks got got up in both games early this year. Do you see England getting payback on home soil? Um, yeah, I've been, I've been reading up on um, and watching a lot of the stuff coming out of the UK about how confident England are, um, you know, going into this test. Uh, this, I honestly feel that they're gonna. It's going to be a tough game. Yeah. But I just think they're going to have that edge over England. Um, and, like, don't get me wrong, it's, it's hard to go to Twickenham and play and play well there. So they have their work cut out. England are firing. I know for a fact Steve Borthwick, Richard Wigglesworth, the, the England coaching staff will be in their heads about revenge, revenge, revenge. Um, it'll be a really good game. I think this will be the game of the week. But Marcus Smith's at 10. He's, he's starting to hit his... You know, he's trying to find his his his, um, his feet. He's actually playing. I don't know if you guys have been watching the Premiership. He's been playing really well consistently. Yeah. And the one thing that he's really involved evolved is his defence game, which in the past has probably been more about his attack and hence why he's sort of been in and out of that England team. But, you know, he's worked really well. You know, he's worked really hard with Kevin Sinfield, their defence coach, Steve Warwick, obviously. He's, they love that. They, you know, they're northern. They're, they're northerners who just love to hit for the sake of hitting. So, um, you know, that's one thing I'm really excited to see. Marcus Smith take the ra- reins at ten. And um, but yeah, it's going to be a close game. But I, ju- I just think New Zealand are going to uh, probably win this by maybe three or four. Three or four. So okay. And Alex, who do you think is going to take this one? Yeah. Look, I think it'll be the All Blacks. Um, I just think that. I just think they're just that little bit they got, they've got that chip on their shoulder and um I think that they need to go over and have a strong series and I think they're going to they're going to carry a bit of the pride with South Africa with the southern hemisphere for us cuz um yeah I was watching a few clips from the love of rugby which is uh got Ben Youngs on there one of Nem's old uh, teammates um or Lenny yeah. <laughs> Ooh, friends. So much, so much. Um, yes, talking about how um, I'm pretty sure it was that pod. Might have, I'm pretty sure it was. So come across TikTok saying that they're not too scared of the All Blacks at the moment. And um, yeah, look, <laughs> I don't think Ben Young's beat uh, the All Blacks too many time in his career uh, <laughs> that era. So um, fair enough, not to be too scared of this All Black side. But I just. They've just got a sense of arrogance about them, the English, which is great because you can't Love blame them. them. If we were like that, we would be doing the same thing, but unfortunately yeah. we're not. But um, I'd just like to see it blow up in their face. I don't think there is um, – I think they're going to be a good side, like Nem said, they are, you know, that under Borthwick, but I just don't think they're there yet. And um, I'd just like to have see them have a little bit of a reality check uh, playing Devil's Advocate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> I think it'll, I think it'll be close, but I think depending on what happens in the first twenty minutes of the game, I think there's a good chance New Zealand could run away with it if it's if it if it goes right in that first kind of start of the game. Yeah, I'm I'm the same. I think it's going to be All Blacks thirteen plus. I think because last time they didn't have Roy Gard, last time they didn't have uh, Satiti firing like he is now, so they've got a, a lot more weapons than they did before. So I feel like All Blacks are going to have a big win, but uh, we'll soon find out. Um, but we'll go on Nem's predictions. If you're a betting person watching, we'll go on Nem's position. All Blacks are one to twelve. All Blacks lock in one to twelve. 
And then, uh, well, I feel like this is the game of the round. Scotland hosting Fiji. Uh, Nems, Fiji finished undefeated in the PNC. And now they've got a number of their European base players um, join them on this northern tour. Can you see them upset Scotland? They've done it before. Yes, I can see them upset Scotland. What really excites me is that we're actually going into this... Well, not what I mean, me, we, them... <laughs> Going into this test match, pretty well rounded in terms of we're secure and set piece. Yep. Like you know, it, we're not. The, I'm not saying we're the strongest of scrummages, but we can hold our own. Yep. But we can. We've got a ten that can kick, but we also now have a fullback that can kick. So now, all of a sudden, we've got kickers, which we all know in the UK, everything's all kicking. You kick as much as it rains. It rains rugby balls down there. So I'm really excited. I, I honestly think. Um, I honestly think they could, if they if they come out firing in the first sort of 20 minutes, you know, with uh, Bill Mutta and, and Albert Tushue and all these guys, look, I think physicality, they're just going to have to come out guns blazing. Um, and I think the one thing that always lets them down, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, is the uh, penalty counts. We all know, you know, back then, when you did penalties against us, you'd be trying to go for the lines and... Now they're doing three pointers because now with you know Fiji's competitive in that in that market in that um, area. So look, it's kind of hot and cold, isn't it? They rock up, they'll win, or the jet lag will get them and they'll still be tired. But I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see Caleb Munts uh, at ten and uh, at fullback. Um, you've got um, Isaiah Armstrong, Ravula. You know, he's, I think that's going to be, I think that's his position at fullback, to be fair, because there's no other fullback, I think, in Fiji that has a kicking game. And let's face it, your, your, your prerequisite as a world class fullback is to kick. Yeah. You know, Frank Lamani, that nine, you know, it's going to be, going to be really good. But up front, I think the forward packs, um, is, um, you know, I think what's going to set that. Yeah. So you think Fiji 1 or 12 or? I want to eat my words here, but I'm going to go Scotland one twelve. Look, my heart says my heart says yeah. Oh yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. My head, my head says like this is going to cause controversy, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to, nah, let's go. Fiji, 1-12. Fiji, 1-12. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Alex City, who are you picking this one? Mate, I think um, I think it's like a new era of Fiji and rugby. So, like, I, I haven't even thought, you know, probably previous times you'd be like, oh, Fiji, they're going on tour. Yeah. You know, it might yeah. be jet lag, like Nem said. But I don't think of him like that anymore. And I think it's, it's it comes back to the drill and, and the professionalism they have around their game. And like Nem says, their set piece – um, how they've looked. Like, I'm really excited about Fiji and rugby. Um, that I think they might be have to be uh, one of my teams now. But, I, I mean, they're not the favourites going in this game, but they're probably probably just as good as Scotland, if not better. And I think I think they're going to get the wood over them. Like, looking at their spring tour as well, they've got Spain, Wales and Ireland. Like, they could easily come away with three wins, yeah. I think. Um, yeah. 100%. On this tour, and I just think again, it comes down to what the conditions are like. But I mean, we saw plenty of Drua games this year in torrential rain, so yeah, I think true. that like, and there was a lot of games this year that like that. So I think they're probably prepared for a little bit of a bit of a slog, considering majority of their squad comes from that team. So I mean, I, I'm going with Fiji. I think Scotland are no slouches. I just I'm on the Fiji train, and um, I'm drinking the Carver, as they would say. <laughs> Yeah. Hi. That makes three of us. Um, I'm also going to go uh, on the Fiji. I just think uh, the, I think who's a Vern Cotter the coach now. He's locked in long term. Yeah, yeah. And uh, no, no, Nick Burns. Oh, Nick Burns. That's the Nick Burns, sorry, same sorry, person. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, Burns, yeah, uh, Blues. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, it was, got him locked in long term, and uh, I think he's got the boys firing, and they've been building for this one. I think this is the one yeah. on tour that they want to get, and then the rest uh, I think is just in the bag easily so uh back in fiji one to 12 mate they could actually like if they get to come away with a win here this could be like this would be massive confidence booster going in you know because usually it's always that first test match where it's yeah. like you know 
but yeah. don't don't sleep on Spain. You know that's what happened to Tonga when Spain came to Tonga. You know, and mm. uh, yeah, because Spain yeah. is Spain is up there. Tier like, three, na- yeah. tier three nation, Tonga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Don't say that to the Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, news out of Australia: rumours are spreading that there's a possible Super Rugby Australia type competition uh, to act as the Australian third tier competition uh, proposed for all f- the four standing Australian Super Rugby sides to battle it out for a rapid fire competition during the spring tour season uh, and uh, with the option to expand in the future years to invite Japanese play- uh, teams or possibly South African teams into it as well. Uh, thoughts on this type of competition? Do you think the supporters will gauge well with it, Nams? Um, I think if you're going to go like the Waratahs and like if it's a four teams like that, yeah. then yeah, I think you're not going to get them at big stadiums. So don't you know Australian rugby, rugby yeah. show, don't take it to Allianz. You're going to get nah. a man and his dog. These are the sort of games that you take to you know Pittwater Park or something, or you take them to Yoku Road or you know Selvin uh, West Bulldogs. I think it's good, but we all we all know. In Brisbane and, and Sydney, we all know the comp we want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where we're sort of, it's our clubs that, yeah. Like Ironside, he's a north through and through. You're west, you know, I'm wherever. Well, well, but I'll, I'll you, but <laughs> you get what I mean? Like, I'm, um, I'm, a, uh, I'm the love of everything. Man. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just think those games, those four games would be more giving young guys, you know, yeah, um, yeah. it won't be as appealing. Like, you're not going to get 10. Nah. 15,000 through the gates, you know. Be They're doing it now, taking squads to Japan and whatnot. Um, I can't see it being big. No. Nah. I, I see it more as it just being a development sort of, and yeah. then the odd old guy, you know. Yeah. They'll play their strong team, but if you're a Wallaby, then you're definitely not going to be playing unless you need the game time. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't be bothering taking it to big stadiums. You'd be taking it to... And, and really, I honestly don't think it's people going to go watch. I don't think so. Onside, what do you already reckon, mate? As a club land. Oh, how do I say it? How do I shut down an idea that's <laughs> really dumb without sounding like an idiot? Yeah. Um, NPC never worked. Um, like the Australian NRC, our NPC yeah. never worked um, because you got people from Gordon playing with people from Norse and people from the Rats playing with people from Manly. Mm. Then you got people from the other side. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, and it was post rugby season, post the you know twenty plus game shoot shield season that I, I, like I won't name some names. A lot of shoot shield boys come off the back of winning a comp. You know, it's hard to go then want to play NRC. Um, yeah, with no one I watching. Think, I think the um, I think the actual answer is I think that the hospital cup and the shoot shield actually needs to start later and, and, and later because it gets to the end of the season. It's like the last four or five games you start getting super rugby players back that aren't in the Wallaby squad. Yep. Mm. If it started, if it started five weeks later, you might get Waratahs, young Waratahs players back, Reds players, whatever, for ten games, and that's probably better for them than the last five games. Better for club rugby, makes it a stronger competition. Um, I think there's the third tier needs to be something where it, it's still that Norse, Ramwick, yes, West and Brisbane brothers. I don't know how you do it, how you fund it. I've mentioned it multiple times, but I think it needs to be – I think the season needs to go later. I think instead of starting it so early, it should start a bit – like, I don't know, a month later and you get another month of Super Rugby players that aren't in that um, – in the, uh, the uh, squads for the um, rugby championship. It'll cross over and it'll give that little gap between the rugby championship and spring tour. I just don't – I just can't see people going to watch the Waratahs play the Reds in um, November. Um, yeah. Like, we love rugby, but I think I think you can – there can be too much rugby. Super rugby is hard enough to get a crowd there, like, or getting yeah. club people to sort of care about it. Um, like, we've said it a lot of the times before, like, super rugby is seen as – a lot of these clubs are seen as rep teams. Like, you only go as if your mates are playing, um, whereas clubs are like... So I went to um, a, uni- a college football game here in Nashville over the weekend, and it was packed. Uh, it was out in Nashville, Vanderbilt, but the crowd was... There was more Texas um, Texas fans there that travelled from Austin. Um, and Because they have a deeper feel... Like, if you go to that college... 
and you don't even play football, you don't even play that sport, you still have a ties to it because you went to that college. Similar to mm-hmm. club, club rugby, that's what I was uh, seeing it as. Uh, you play that club rugby, you, even if you played as a junior or you were just around that area, um, you feel like you have a connection to the club. That's why we love our, our club land clubs so much, Yeah, uh, which we don't have that tie to super rugby. Like we only go really when our mates are there or um, if we get free tickets. So um, it, it is going to be a hard sell. So I feel like they're still going the, the wrong way, but still it will be better than nothing. It's uh, I think it's just going to be like they got the under 19s. It's just going to be similar to that. No one really yeah. going to watch it. But yeah. it'd be good to see that rugby. It'd be good to see the a way to rejig the um, right Australian club championship. Um, to happen maybe a couple of weeks after the season, like yeah. or something like that, instead of it being this pre-season tournament, because like a lot of guys don't play that would have played in the final from the Shoot Shield won't play in that rugby. It, it's a new year, new team, could be a new coach. It, yeah. it might need to happen two weeks after. I think the NRL does that where they have the New South Wales Cup team. Yeah, play. yeah. I think it's a it, there's a break, like a week break, then they play or something. It used to be like that, but, but I don't just, know if you. Yeah, I don't know how you dig that because you've got to include like NEMS's Victorian teams and and ACT somehow. Like, but yeah, I don't do. know. You do I don't know how you do that when, um, I mean, the Shoot Shield and Hospital Cup. Like, it's pr- it's a it's a pretty yeah. Uh, yeah. decent level of up. But but even around that, like, if you're going to do it around the November, you know, that time of the year. It's seven season. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like it's sevens, yeah, it's tens. People are, are going to Dubai. Or there people are, there's competitions in, in you yeah. know, Byron Bay, for instance, or Kayama or whatever. Great one. But, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like it just, I mean, that's in January. But what I'm saying is it's, it's seven season. It's like this is the time where everyone actually just goes and gets on the piss sort of thing. So that, that, that third tier, which is only four teams, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't see it making it work. And, but if, and also, yeah. too, you're going to be picking, and in, in that time of year as well, you'll be picking a lot of guys from super uh, shoot. So, let's pick a lot of guys from super um, shoot shield teams to a super rugby team because, I mean, the Waratahs yeah. have probably something like 15 guys in different squads. So, like, I mean, it's not a professional comp. Um, mm. I mean, for anyone that doesn't know club rugby in Australia, like we get a lot of South Africans is there's no money it's all the money so top heavy shoot shield players might be lucky to get you know 100 and 200 bucks of games and in, in, in them's case they probably got a couple of bottles of red wine as well on top of that but you know if you're wow. working full, if you're working full time you can't commit to 12 months it, it'll end up no. being a 10 month season for you and, and you got to go to work so I mean there's that aspect of it too I don't think they probably speak to enough probably um, shoot shield players about that and hospital cup and all that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. In other words, show me the manis. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, over URC update. Okay, uh, Leinster remain the only unbeaten team this season with a clean record as they come away with a 24 to six win. Uh, Sharks had a big 17 point win over Munster with a number of uh, Springbok stars starring, including scrum half Grant Williams, Afalil Fassi and Andre Esterhausen. But the game of the round for me was Glasgow um, versus the Stormers. Springbok's utility, Demi Willems had crossed early uh, before Glasgow Glasgow replied with a try to Sione Tupolotu in the corner. Glasgow eventually finished on top, scoring two back-to-back tries late. Uh, once again, the newly appointed Scotland skipper Sione Tupolotu was my player of the round. He was massive for Glasgow, scored a try, set up another one, and uh, was just massive around the park. Pretty excited to see him in the leadership role, both at club and international level. Uh, after six rounds of top four teams in the URC, uh, the unbeaten Leth, Leinster sitting pretty on top, followed by Glasgow, the Bulls, and the Lions, and with uh, Connor not too far away. Now, uh, Nems, what's going on in the uh, English Prem? Um, so, yeah, a bit of update. Bristol um, victors over uh, 31 points, victor, uh, beating Northampton, sorry, 23 down in Bristol. Gloucester 36 to 7 um, over Newcastle, which was uh, given Bath 40, big win for Bath. They're, they're actually red hot this year, old Bath, beating Sale 40 um, 13. And Sale, you know, they're, they're a big defensive team. Uh, Exeter 19 losing at home 
So they're, they're having a rough season, rough start sure. all uh, Exeter, and they beat Harley, uh, they lost to Harley Quinn's 1936. But for me, it was uh, me old team, Leicester Tigers, beating <laughs> Saracens. Get this, at Saracens, which is very, very hard to be, to do, beating them 32-29. So I stayed up yeah. and watched that. Um, mine was Isaiah Parisi, played really well. Um, and he just, see, like, he's... He's killing it. He's killing it. Like, who, who's to say if there's an injury over there for Wallabies that they don't pick him up? You know what I mean? Like, he's there. But he's been um, – the last few games that he's been playing for him, he's, uh, he's been going, um, you know, levels to levels. But he just suits the game over there. You know what I mean? Yeah. He just suits hard. it. So, um, yeah, Zai Perezzi, stop sending me uh, – <laughs> Funny uh, stories on Instagram, mate. <laughs> Keep it at bay, eh, mate? So he sends me he, he sends me gorilla gorilla videos, <laughs> <laughs> and he watches his show too. So hey, I'm sending me gorilla videos, mate. Uh, All right, um, and uh, Alex, what's going on in uh, Top Gaton? Um, yeah, so, I mean, probably my first proper year following the French rugby, but, um, I mean, it's just such a topsy-turvy <laughs> game. Um, we don't know who's playing every week. It's it's the Wild West, and I'll tell you what, I'm starting to love it. Um, my team, uh, Bordeaux, got over Paul. Who? Uh, 19-6. Uh, Lyon lost to Bayon, 49-38. Montpellier um, got over uh, La Rochelle, which was um, probably, been a, probably the upset of the round. It was 16-0. Um, I did watch a few highlights from game. Pretty impressive stuff from Montpellier. Uh, Toulouse, my, my hometown, Toulouse, uh, 57 5 <laughs> over Toulon. Um, Vans beat Castres, 34 really? 28. How good. Yeah. Um, and then Stade France pumped Clermont 36 6. But, but, uh, my match of the round was Racing versus Pepignon. Um, Owen Farrell kind of wound back the clock this week. Um, put a grubber in, a little grubber try, uh, did it all himself. I think that was his first try for Racing. And, um, yeah, he's, he's still kind of got it, which is annoying because you got to love and hate that bloke. Um, if he's your in your team, you'd love him, but you got to hate him. Um, but the top four is now uh, Toulouse on 29, Bordeaux on 28, Bayonne 22 points and equal with La Rochelle Ooh. on 22nd. Bayonne? Yeah. Are they top six? Good. They're top three. They're third. Yeah. Like, because they beat Le- they, they, I saw the Leon highlights. Saw a few. Yeah. They, the tries they were scoring in that game was freakish. Leon. Um, but I th- on the weekend, um, um, Nems is uh, Montpellier are now in eleventh. But um, <laughs> that's a pretty big upset. They they beat a top four side, and they um, to to keep them scoreless. La Rochelle's pretty impressive stuff. But uh, I don't what know. What happened in my days? I don't know if you saw, but um, uh, Entermac, I think, is uh, he's going to yeah, be out of the yeah. autumn. Um, really? Autumn, yeah. uh, tests. Uh, he did his calf. He's five weeks out or something like that. So, but um, if you've not watched much French rugby, um, and it is it's kind of a hard thing to get a hold of, not only is it good rugby, but um, you can't pick it every week. You'd hate to bet. We're not going to be putting any bets on that. Um <laughs> Obviously, we know the home and away schedule. There's the bomb squad, but um, <laughs> it's great. It's great footy. Um, and then there's also there's always names you're watching. Um, you're watching the game, or you see a team this, and there's a bloke you haven't heard from or seen in years, and it's just yeah. good to see they're over there making some dosh. Yeah, mate, it's 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 a good. And you actually forgot one breaking news. Um, I've actually transferred. Um, I'm, I've, I've moved from uh, Toulouse and I'm transferring to racing uh, just because, you know, my mate, uh, Fletico, just trying to get some gears sorted. Uh, and, uh, big fan, big fan of the gears and also big fan of their home stadium. Uh, they wear Nike, I think, insane, don't they? Yeah. And the stadium looks insane. Looks like just a yeah. massive rumpus room. So, um, yeah, I'm ready to have some fun with the wrestling team. Uh, Faletti said this to your team owner, mate. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the job. Thank you for the job. <laughs> okay. And then uh, 
NPC, the final match of the year, Wellington Lions versus Bay of Plenty in slippery conditions. Wellington pounced early with two tries to the bus in the first half. However, the Bay of Plenty kept in touch all game. After 80 minutes, both teams were deadlocked at 20. Ex, uh, in extra time, it was a bit of a Northern Hemisphere battle. The Lions eventually uh, winning a scrum penalty within kicking range and then Harkin slotting the three, which uh, turned out to be the difference in the end. Um, I thought Duplessis Karifi was once again one of the standouts for the Lions and one of my standouts for the entire season. Um, it was good to see the Lions get up. They, you got to give it to Wellington. Like just watching that that game, they were just relentless. Like Bay of Plenty holding it for twenty six faces, yeah. pretty much that whole half of that extra time, and still couldn't. And like to hold it in that weather as well. Yeah, that was crazy. But um, no, Wellington were uh, they were. Men like they were just possessed and in, in, in defense, and they you could tell they didn't want to give this up. Yeah, unlucky of Bay of Plenty, I think too much experience in the Wellington team sort of brought them a home. And then in that second half, the same thing happened, they just kept holding them out. I think, I think they probably made 100 tackles or more in that extra time. Wellington did, yeah, it was um, insane. Yeah, Duplessis Karifi, um, he was again like. It's going to be – like, I don't know if it's it, if it's going to be hard for him to – like, you, you, you're you a forward, Ironside, you'd know, but to make that all-black squad with, with someone in his position, and he's killing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It just goes to show how much depth is in that new, over there in New Zealand. And unfortunately, like, he might not even play, get to play for the all-blacks for another few years yet, but he's just – he deserves to be there, but I get it with selection-wise. But, yeah, again, he had another big year. Had a broken jaw, bear in mind. Broke his jaw earlier in the yeah, season. Yeah, true. Um, and I thought he was done, but he'd come back and... How gangster does it look when Mate. he carries the cup? <laughs> yeah. And he goes and... You know, any other captain would just be like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you. Guys, you ready? Guys, you ready? This guy's like... Top two! <laughs> but yeah, fuck that. That was gangster. I, I thought that was pretty cool. You catch it, Alex? Yeah. Yeah, I... um. I was at a mate's wedding and uh, lucky got the first bus to the the, the Sands and I had the stand sport coverage up for the whole first half and yeah. then um, I was going awesome. I'm going, I've timed it perfectly. Almost timed it perfectly. The game's going to end and I just went 20 minutes ago. I'll go <laughs> this year and go to extra yeah. time. Um, I mean, yeah, like I, I thought that um, – I don't know if they were the best team of the year, obviously, but I just thought that Bay of Plenty might have been the team of destiny. Like, they beat Auckland the last round and they beat Bay of Plenty, then they beat, I'm sorry, beat Hawks Bay, then they beat Canterbury. I just thought that they get over line. And, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy for Wellington. That, that's a quality Wellington side. Um, uh, the, uh, Harkin, who kicked the goal's brother, actually plays at Norse, so a little oh. connection there. Always well, has yeah. to bring it back to Norse. Um, <laughs> but uh, Duplessy Karifi is... Going to probably be one of the best um, back rowers to not play for the All Blacks, I think, unfortunately. And I, I'd love him too. Yeah. But um, same. He's going to probably play 100-plus games for Wellington by the end of his career in, in um, NPC and probably 100-plus games for the Hurricanes if he keeps it up. Um, yeah. But, uh, I mean, if he had some Australian – does he have any Australian heritage? Yeah. Probably not with a name like Duplessis, probably more South African. South but, African, I mean, yeah. We can always find something. We'll get the detectives on it in the back end at um, the PAC HQ headquarters. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's 27, obviously, but I, I think he's probably just that – I mean, it's it's not right, but he's probably just not that big enough, tall enough to, to I think get it's that next he's a level. Specialist but seven, which they don't do anymore, especially Razor. Yeah, and, and, he wants and everyone's kind three. of going away from that. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. That was gangster, and, and I did catch the end of it. And it's just, um, it was, it wasn't a great. I wouldn't say it was an amazing game of rugby, but just a good, yeah, a good, good tough battle. game. It was, and you're saying about the twenty phases. There was a few times where Bay of Plenty actually went into the the twenty plus phases, and. Um, Bay of Plenty have got a big side. Like, they've got some big boys. They definitely were bigger, and they still weren't getting over that line. Yeah. So, um, I mean, end of a season, what an awesome competition, some awesome stories. Tasman um, holding the Ramfrey Shield for that long. Um, I mean, Jimmy Tava Tava Nawai, my player of the, yeah, of true, the whole. Yeah. He was unreal. Um, big fan of his. Uh, saw that... Um, 
saw that he had the Fiji retro jersey that he, I saw he traded it for something <laughs> shirt online, the thing. But, mate, just some good stories. It's just such a great competition. Payne Edmund over there. Um, yeah, a few we're others. talking about, um, you know, just I think we need to send more players over there. I think the, I think the key was you quite happily have them. Um, yeah. yeah. It adds to it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're talking about a second tier, third tier, whatever we want to call it, and it's just uh, – so jealous of that. It's got to be one of the best, that type of world. I mean, the Curry Cup, very similar type of standard, and that's awesome as well. But, yeah, I mean, it's been great to have six, seven extra games of rugby to watch a week. It's all over. But, I mean, great season, some really good games, and um, congratulations to Wellington. Yeah, nice. Well said. Um, and then uh, viewers' questions. We only had one. Um, <laughs> being a high-profile player has its perks, but not – as much when you're going through a uh, public breakup. Do you guys think the current situation with, I'm not going to say his name, will affect his game and profile? Uh, so, yeah, if you're not um, one of the high-profile players in rugby, you've probably already seen it if you're um, in the Who's rugby that? circles. Uh, has gone through a public breakup and this person's asked, will it affect their game? Um, I wasn't a high-profile player, but I did go through a uh, not even a public uh divorce back in my days when I was playing but I, <laughs> but to answer this question I feel like I became a rugby head because I had rugby to I put all my energy into rugby when I was going through that time so I feel like yeah I feel like uh, whether this play and any other players going through I feel like we're lucky as rugby as people in this rugby circle that we have rugby to sort of fall back on and we have we always have friends everywhere we go I used it to go overseas when this thing happened and uh, st- essentially start a new life over in Amsterdam um, but yeah I feel like this person will be sweet and uh, he played on the weekend and he played fine so I think he's going to be alright and um, yeah Oh, Einstein's probably uh, <laughs> he's probably the most recent one out of all of us um, so yeah. dealing with look- a, uh, a, a public breakup <laughs> at North fourth grade that's a pretty big deal down there um, yeah. I mean yeah. I think it's I, I think without getting too, too I think right, without getting too much I think rugby gives you a lot and um I think that there's shit goes on in your life yeah. constantly, and I think that's the only place sometimes that you can forget about it. I don't yeah. think, um, not even professionally. I think just in general, um, going down to rugby training or you know going to the gym. Sometimes you can bring it there, but that doesn't always mean you, it's good or bad. You might try and take a teammate's head off a test match Tuesday with the boys, but um, yeah, I don't think a professional at that stand is going to make a difference. I think it's it's important that. That you get around him, but um, you know, there's shit going on in everyone's life you probably don't know about, so I, don't, I can't see it being that big of an issue. Yeah. Um, said player is probably one of the best players yeah. currently going around, and um, he does wear his heart in his sleeve anyway, but um, I'm sure that he could could get it out uh, without worrying too much about it, but yeah. yeah. Get out what? <laughs> get out the uh, the sadness slash oh, anger. The sadness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just like said players said in their posts, uh, we'll uh, respectfully give them the space and uh, let's hope everyone on TikTok does the same thing and just leave them alone. Uh, yeah, if you've got any other questions uh, that are not from uh, Women's Weekly, please send them through <laughs> or, um, for next week. Um, yeah. Uh, and shout outs, boys. Nems, who are you shouting out for this week? Um, my shout out is is to a guy who used to play, played Australia Sevens, played for Waratahs. Um, I think he was from South and Southern Districts. Uh, played for Tonga Sevens. He's now the Tonga ah. Sevens coach, uh, big Afa Pakalani. Um, big fan of him. Had a, got to play them over in Hong Kong earlier this year when we uh, just went down to the uh, Mighty Big Athletics. Uh, <laughs> We were lucky sort of to be there, to be fair. We were just, oh, mate, we'll start right, mate. We've got playing some real rugby. So, um, yeah, we played in that game. So, yeah, big shout out to Afbuck He's just been, um, he's been employed, well, he's been asked to coach Tongan Sevens. He's a big, you know, he's a, he's a big servant of Tongan rugby. You know, he's, a, I think he's a cabinet maker by trade. So it's not like, you know, as we all know, there's no money over there and, he gets, he goes over and, um, you know, whenever he gets the opportunity to play for Tonga, he takes with both hands and, and you know, most times he's paying for himself to get over there. So couldn't be more happier for him. And I think if there's a deserving Tongan person that to take this job, 
It's that man. He comes with a lot of wealth, uh, wealth of experience, and um, he's been playing. He's still playing now. So uh, yeah, big shout to big Afa Togo. Good shout. Afa Layat too. Uh, Alan, who's your shout out for the week? Um, I'm the number one Australian fan of this uh, local Welsh club where my uh, good mate Flynn's from. But the Arbroven Quins are uh, five games into their uh, into their season um, in the Division One uh, Central. Uh, Central West Division 2 with the Wales comp over there. Um, they're sitting in tight, mighty in third place, but I've got their jersey on. They sent over because I like to comment on their posts, not knowing half their players and saying good luck to uh, so-and-so. So quick shout out to Quinns and also quick shout out to um, the uh, Pack podcast with uh, Ryan on there. I mean, I've been listening the last couple of weeks. He does get sad. You know, yeah. we mentioned this on that, but uh, very excited for the uh, clash of the minds when rugby heads in the Pack pod. Yeah. I mean, from the exact same network come together <laughs> for this Nines, uh, yeah. nines tournament. Um, I think people would call it getting rugby league drunk, but um, a rugby union drunk can be quite scary. So uh, look out, uh, uh, Ant and the team over there at the Nines, because uh, big names and maybe run on the water maybe for half a game, and then I can't see us doing much more than that. <laughs> yeah, then you guys can jump in the commentary box. <laughs> KO, KO debut. Nice, boys. Uh, yeah, my one's to also uh, the Pack Podcast. Uh, I know one of the questions in this, well, when I put up the question box today, was uh, Ryan Freeney also complaining uh, why I uh, took a day off from the Pack Podcast last week. We didn't do an episode, um, but we did Rugby Heads uh, as per each week. Um, he was complaining, uh, but yeah, sorry, mate. We'll be back next uh, tomorrow, mate. We'll record tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, and also shout out to my uh, new best friends in the world, uh, UT University of Texas. Uh, the Longhorns, <laughs> Longhorns, uh, mate, best, best atmosphere on the weekend, and uh, and the Austin Blacks, uh, big things coming. We're trying to uh, organise a bit of a, a, to- a rugby tournament uh, that we'll be running uh, next year. So um, yeah, uh, we'll try and see uh, how we go and um, damn, we'll put our footprints in USA rugby. Guess so. what? Guess we'll have to go, Nams. Damn, damn, <laughs> Nashville or Austin. So uh, we'll see. Big things coming, uh, but yeah. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe. Boys, thanks for calling in. And we'll see you next week. Cheers, my bros. Cheers, cuz. <laughs>